So we're still inside the caldera and uh, here we uh, are at the Tree of Rocks again and uh, just in front of me there is a more massive, boulder rich conglomerate type deposit and this is a former intra caldera breccia or breccia fill of the old Las Cañadas caldera. So here we have some larger blocks. This one is clearly a buffer meter, so this would then be called a mega breccia. If clasts are below one meter, it's a meso breccia. So here, uh, this is maybe just one or two, but still it makes the class uh, uh, significant enough to define this as a mega breccia in the sense of Lippmann, who was a researcher in the Western US. He was doing a lot of work on these intercaldera fill breccias. So if we walk around a little bit here, so we'll see more of it. And then we get into a finer facies here. That facies here would be a meso breccia because here the clasts are clearly below one meter. So this is a, a reflection of how big um, the chunks of rocks were that fell off the caldera walls and were deposited in the caldera basin and of course also it may have a, um, a significance for the transport distance the longer the material is transported the smaller the class so and i'd like to shift over to this outcrop here there we have a uh, intrusion we have a dike and this dike here is inclined so this would be a cone sheet shaped dike inside the Las Cañadas caldera and again it is actually intruding into a breccia so with larger class somewhere in the transition of a meso to a mega breccia some of the class seem a little larger and uh, here we have this inclined sheet that uh, comes through and uh, we see it kind of moving up here at about, I guess, 45 degrees or something like this. So an inclined sheet, a cone sheet type intrusion. And this implies that there was overpressure at the time. So the caldera must have had a little resurgence. And uh, well, Tate is towering over us. And uh, here's the cone sheet again. And uh, just here, we have the tree of rocks again. 